Uh, Professor Chu, first, we are so honored and delighted that you have agreed to be interviewed in this series. Uh, you, you are a, an extremely prolific scholar, especially in the area of Catholicism uh, in China. But, but even beyond that, uh, uh, Dr. Chu, you, you are not only a scholar in Hong Kong, but you are very much a scholar of Christianity in Hong Kong. Uh, for those who may not uh, know who you are by some miracle, um, I think it's important to note that you have written some extremely respected works. For example, your book on the Mary Knoll sisters in Hong Kong. You also wrote a, a book on the sisters of the precious blood who also served in Hong Kong. Uh, and you are, and I want to be brief because our, our goal is to hear what you have to say, but you're also the editor of, a, of an important series called the uh, Christianity in Modern China series with Palgrave Macmillan, uh, a press that was founded, goodness, 177 years ago. So a very respected press. But, um, but, but with that introduction, uh, Professor Chu, let, let's just begin with the first question. And you know, we're asking all of the scholars the exact same questions. Um, you know, uh, Confucius once said, may your thoughts never go astray. <laughs> but okay, every yeah. once in a while, maybe we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just for fun. <laughs> <laughs> right, just for fun. But the first question, uh, Professor Chu, what brought you to the field of China Christianity studies and not only what brought you to the field, but maybe what attracted you to the specific areas about which you've researched. Okay, maybe then I have to go back to my very old days when I studied in Hong Kong U. Um, I got my BA and MPhil. We have the British system, MPhil, from Hong Kong U. And uh, when I was doing my MPhil, meaning that I only need to write up a thesis and then I can get the degree of uh, Master of Philosophy, I was writing about Sino-American relations in the 1940s and 50s. Myself, at that time, was interested in political history and also in U.S. diplomatic history. Mm, I, well, I was very much, much interested in U.S. diplomatic history because of the w way they write history. Uh, about the, like the traditional approach and then the uh, revisionist approach and then the post-revisionist approach. I was kind of interested in having that kind of approach to history because uh, in Asian studies or China studies, we tend to a little bit lack behind in terms of theory and approaches. I don't know whether you agree, but that's my understanding at that time when I, when I was a master's student. So I finished my degree with uh, Hong Kong U, Master of Philosophy, and then I moved on to Hawaii. Uh, at first, I didn't expect to go to Hawaii because I, at that time, I wanted to do a PhD in U.S. diplomatic history in U.S. diplomatic history. So you should go to the mainland, right? <laughs> Not to Hawaii. Um, but uh, fortunately, because the East-West Center gave me a scholarship for four years. That means I don't need to do anything for four years, but then I can get a degree afterward. So, so that is very tempting because if you are a TA, that will take up a lot of your time. But if a scholarship, you, you don't really need to do anything. <laughs> so um, that will well promise me to be able to finish the degree on time. And at that time, I, I was in the history department. Uh, the person responsible for US diplomatic history was Richard Immerman. Uh, he is the, with the U University of Pennsylvania or somewhere, somewhere in Pennsylvania. And the one responsible for was contemporary, for contemporary China was Stephen Uhaley. And because Immerman was leaving us, so I have no one to supervise me, and Professor Uhaley was very nice. And so I shift my focus from US history to Chinese history. And because um, Dr. Uhaley, he is really into contemporary China, and that also gave me um, quite some interest in contemporary China. And at that time, because it was uh, um, 1997 Izu in Hong Kong, and it becomes very uh, 
promising a topic to do. So I was doing a thesis, a PhD thesis, on the Chinese Communist policy in Hong Kong on the United Front strategy. Okay, so and, and it's published. It's published uh, sometime later, later than the Merino sisters. <laughs> so, um, so at that time, I was quite happy with my work and uh, got a sense of what I should do. And also, when I was in Hawaii, I feel that maybe I should go back home to work, go back to Hong Kong to work because of my research. I think maybe what I did will benefit the Hong Kong people or the Hong Kong students. Okay. And luckily, uh, there was an advertisement for a job in my present university now, uh, the Hong Kong Baptist University, for a post um, for someone to teach contemporary China and also for someone to teach foreign relations of modern China. Now, at that time, there were no historians teaching contemporary China. So I was the only one who was a historian, but focusing on contemporary China. And that, at the time, the head, he did not like political scientists. <laughs> so to him, political scientists is no, no. But all those applying for my job were political scientists, except me, the only historian. So I guess I should thank the Lord for this chance. So I got the job before I graduated from Hawaii. So I came back and uh, taught the students on contemporary China and foreign relations. And then uh, one year afterward, I, gradu I graduated. So for the time being, I was still interested in political history and foreign relations. And how to say, so I was still publishing articles on those two topics on China. And then why did I now switch to Christianity? It was one day when, when I was sitting in my new apartment, and then I said, well, I should do something meaningful, not just to get my paycheck, right? So I would say, oh, I should, I should do something which is close to myself. And then I had two options. One option was to, to do a topic on the uh, old intellectuals in Hong Kong, because my grandfather on the on my mother's side, he uh, was an intellectual and and a really really in, an intellectual, a very famous intellectual, uh, famous in the sense he he he's very good in 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 the pictures, in the in the Chinese pictures he painted. Okay, so he's belonged to the uh, southern branch of the. Uh, Chinese intellectuals teaching people how to how to say poems, uh, how to paint, that kind of thing. But the problem with that is that they did not have materials left behind for me to do that topic. So I had no no materials to do a topic of my family. So then I have to think of another one. And then I thought, what what did I do here? Why? Am I like this? What, how, why do I always behave like this? Uh, what, what do I mean behaving like this? Maybe uh, arguing with my boss, <laughs> something like that. Then I th think, ah, maybe because from primary school to secondary school, I was being in charge by the Mary North sisters, the Americans who always like to argue with people. So it's no, it's no uh, surprise that an American might argue with the boss, but for Chinese, it's a little bit difficult here. So I thought, okay, maybe I'll, I'll learn about the sisters. And one thing also led me to do about the sisters because here in our department at that time, there were people working on Christianity. Christianity meaning the Protestant church in Hong Kong and China. Uh, I had no idea about that before I came to Hong Kong Baptist University. But when I came to de this department, I kind of realized that Christianity can be studied in these different ways. So that also allowed me to have more confidence in studying the, the, the sisters. And, <laughs> and then, um, and some of the sisters whom I um, <laughs> wrote about, they, they already passed away, but uh, at that time, there were quite so many of them. And I uh, approached them and they were very approachable. And uh, they seemed to trust me entirely, which is uh, to my idea is, well, this is very risky. 
they, they didn't teach me because those are uh, in their 90s or 80s uh, or, or early 80s, I should say, and they never taught me. But then once they knew that I, I graduated from their school, oh, I, we, 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 we trust you completely. I thought, wow, well, this is not very wise to do, but then they trust me. And then I, I, wrote, I wrote a uh, draft paper on them without going into their archives. And I presented that in 2001 in a conference that I organized. And in the conference that I organized, and at that time there was like John Carroll and other people. It's, I think that is the Society for the History of 20th Century China. That includes some uh, Taiwanese Americans, something like that. And I uh, presented that topic in the conference, and two American sisters came to hear. Two American sisters came to hear. They were of quite old age, they were in the early, 90, uh, early 80s, 80s. One was always working with the church in the parish, very famous among the parish, because she, she talked very quickly and uh, walked very quickly and uh, uh, had no, uh, well, had no reluctance to s tell you that you are wrong. <laughs> so, uh, and then another one was uh, um, Sister, uh, 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 Rose to Shane, she, because she had been a uh, school mistress for two schools, so she was very much liked by the other uh, 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 schoolmates. So they, they very much encouraged me to do the task. And then they said, well, the archives in New York, they are managed by both a brother and then a sister, and that sister happened to work in Hong Kong before. So uh, she will help you. She's an old China hen. She will help you. And I, I, and I was, wow, oh, then that's good. That's good. That, uh, then they, they should have something. But at that time, I didn't really know how much they had. So it was kind of risky. It's kind of risky because I didn't have so much time because I'm going there in summer. I don't have so much time. But they were very uh, encouraging. And I wrote the email to that sister and she was very encouraging and said, well, you come, we have many things to do. Okay, okay. But I, I cannot go for a long time. I, I could only go for one month. And now this is where um, technology helps. And suddenly uh, that year, we developed digital camera. Okay. We did not have digital cameras before. And it was the first time I bought a digital camera to uh, uh, take photos of, wow, many, many uh, uh, materials, okay. So I'm lucky in terms of technology, lucky in terms, they did have a lot of materials. And also the third thing is that they trust me. They did not think that I'm doing things uh, not for their good. So, so that is the reason I, I get into Christianity in Hong Kong at that time. And uh, also it's something I like to do because the Protestant churches are always very progressive. They always did much better than us because they, they already did all kinds of churches. And we, the Catholics, oh, very slow. <laughs> That's my impression. Uh, yeah, the, the, the history, uh, we, 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 we don't bother. Why bother anymore the history? And also talking about women uh, is, uh, well, there's not much talking about women. So because uh, I, I myself, because I had the uh, background of doing Sino-American relations, I now shifted Sino-American relations to the cultural side, not the diplomatic side. That's, I think, very important because it's through the interaction between Chinese and Americans that we now been able to understand each other because many mistakes happened because of ignorance. So I, I, I now think that, well, my upbringing uh, helped me and also because of the trust of the sisters and, um, and because of the archives there. So I went, I went, the first time was for one month. And um, when I went into the ar archives, you know, Americans like to talk, right? But I, when I went into the archives, I try not to talk to them because once I talk, 
I will lose my time. So when I went into the archives, I shut my mouth. So they tend to think that, well, she's not very friendly. <laughs> yeah. So I, sh I shut my mouth. And then from morning to, to the afternoon, I was standing and then taking pictures like crazy, like crazy. I, I, I'm not going to see what they are about. I just take all the pictures. And, and that's also one lucky thing is that when I came back and when I print out all those things, they tend to uh, link each other, link each other very well. Every material link up very well. And that's kind of lucky too. Uh, maybe I'm blessed. So um, that's the reason I, I, I enter this field. Yeah. You know, that, that, that answer is, is uh, particularly interesting because in a way, Professor Chu, if, if you hadn't been from Hong Kong, um, I think accessing or writing about the history of Catholicism in the modern period would be very sensitive. Okay, I see. So in a way, uh, you're one of the very few scholars then who researches and writes about uh, religious orders and, and Catholics in the post-1949 era. Yeah, yeah. Right, and in the mainland, it's more difficult for them to write about that. But you know, you've you you have you have talked a lot about your research in the archives. The second question then is, have you ever had a a research discovery that made you think differently about the topic of Christianity in, in Asia? Okay, um, I mainly because I look into the um, different sisters, look into the individuals, so I tend to now when i look into the materials i've been able to really to understand them to understand them through what they write their photos etc so for example um when i um do this topic i, I have very faint idea of how a missionary was although i wrote one draft paper i but i, I do not have the idea of how a missionary was. Maybe when I was in Hong Kong, they were the teachers. So um, to us, they were oh, another Hong Kong person, <laughs> not American, <laughs> another Hong Kong person. So they, they were very much like us. And uh, we, we, we don't sense the differences. But when you tell, tell me the missionaries, well, what, what does missionary mean? Well, they used the word missioner actually. So I, I do have to ask, why did the Americans use missionary? Why were the British using missionaries? Because some of the papers I published, people did ask me, what's the difference between a missionary and a missionary? I said, they're the same. <laughs> uh, okay, and um, when I look into the archives, I really got to know um, the missionaries themselves. And also when I interviewed them, I got to know them. And uh, now, um, one of the missionaries who came to Hong Kong, um, she was the leader of the group of six. Now, this is also something peculiar. I find out that when the first group came to Hong Kong, the Kenosian sisters or the Mary North sisters, they are always in the number of six. I don't know what, what is the meaning of six. Why not seven? <laughs> seven is better. But well, I, 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 um, recently I realized that they are also a group of six. And, um, her name was Sister Mary Paul, the leader of the group of six who first came to Hong Kong. And the reason why she was chosen to come to Hong Kong was that she is very uh, furious. <laughs> she, 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 um, she was very straight. She was even straighter than the Mother General. Okay, she even told the Mother General that you are not straight enough. Okay, so she was very straight. And she could do things very quickly. And um, as I mentioned in my book, even during the um, Japanese occupation in the internment camp, she was able to negotiate with uh, Japanese soldiers. So you can see what kind of woman she, she was. But then uh, the most impressive um, letter I think from the archives was the first letter they sent from their uh, convent back to New York. And in their letter, Sister Mary Port 
on the first night she was in Hong Kong, she uh, that 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 letter was of four pages. She used half a page to detail draw a cockroach on a wall. Really, uh, if you have my book, you you'll be able to. Um, can I? Oh yes, please. please. Uh, let me check. She drew a cockroach. Now you imagine she is such a furious person, straight to 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 spend time drawing a cockroach. Oh my god! <laughs> and uh, I, so whenever I, uh, whenever I have a time, I will tell students or um, other researchers this quest this um, interesting. Uh, Thing the cockroach, cockroach. Uh, I have to find for you, and uh, because of that, so I sense even how stern a person is, he or she had some sign of weakness. For example, the first day she was in Hong Kong, I think is so much a shock to her, cultural shock to her. Okay, I'm trying to find a cork coach. Uh, hmm. Anyway, that is one thing. And then um, the other thing is when I was interviewing the sisters, every one of them gave me an impression that they were very humble. The idea of humility in front of a Chinese society was um, unbelievable. There was one sister, she she was in China. She was not in Hong Kong. Uh, in in well, she was not in Hong Kong in her first house. But later, she she went to Hong Kong because of the communist takeover. Okay, this co coach. Um, oh my goodness! Yes. Uh, this is the diaries. This is their diaries. Okay. So yes, of course, wow, that's quite an image of a cockroach. Yeah, I, I, well, but he, when she said it's the bug that was um, on the wall, she didn't really use the word cockroach. So I, I uh, this is, um, um, okay, 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 uh, okay. Anyway, um, so I think this is very interesting. And another sister, she went to China. And then after 1950s, because of um, being uh, kicked out from China, they went to Hong Kong to serve. And then um, she, uh, she, she was very um, uh, into herself. I mean, uh, she's not a person who likes to talk very much, okay? Um, and I interviewed her and she said, well, the experience of getting into China is like reincarnation, reincarnation. Well, Reincarnation. It is for Buddhists. But then she said it's like reincarnation. Then you kind of get a feel that she was totally shocked by the situation in China. Like she's going to another world, maybe the time machine. Okay, so so I, I always feel those people who, who went to China at that time, how could they survive? I mean, for us, for even for me, if I, oh, well, when I went, went to Hawaii, that there, there was cultural shock. We have TV, radio, everything like that, but at that time they don't have TV, and then they had to get used to the Chinese. At that time it was totally different from them, and they were totally different from the Chinese, right? So, um, well, and she used the word reincarnation. I think it's very brilliant, actually. Um, I have to say that the Merino sisters, they were very well educated. They um, finished high school, and then they enter the congregation. And after they enter the congregation, they have the Merino um, College, and they enter the college and they study. And so they were the more educated, maybe, um, congregations. I don't know whether in Mer America or in, in elsewhere. So um, they, 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 were, they, they think in ways which reflect their education, okay, reflect the education. And this is another thing, 
uh, the reincarn reincarnation thing. And then um, the third one, maybe out of three examples, the third one is Sister Mary Dickens. And uh, she also uh, went to China and then afterwards she went to Hong Kong. And uh, she was, she was oh, the, the Merino sisters, they were very famous in Hong Kong. Now this sister was famous because um, she was like Sister um, Mary Lou, uh, another sister. They both spoke very fast. In terms of Americans, in English, they spoke very fast and none were able to catch up with them, okay? Uh, if you have two Americans now talking to each other in absolute speed, you would say, ah, what are they doing? And Mary Lou and Mary Dickens, they learned Cantonese and they spoke Cantonese in rapid speed also later on. <laughs> so people were like, oh, what are they talking? I don't understand what they are talking. And they walked very fast. They did things very fast, okay? So this is the sister, Sister Mary uh, Dickens. And then I interviewed them, uh, interviewed her actually, and she said, now, the, as you say, uh, Americans, they, because my impression of my, my students in Hawaii is that they, they were very eager to talk. They like to um, show, a little bit show off, <laughs> maybe. And then Sister Mary Dickens, she said, well, do you know, as Americans, we know nothing. I said, oh, Americans, you know nothing. You, you know many things, or we just don't know anything. And then I said, why? Why did she say like that? And then she explained herself. In China, when people wear white, it is, it is bad, right? When you wear the entire gown in white, it's bad. It's like people died, right? And our summer habit are all wet, oh, sorry, all white, all white. So people don't like that idea, you see, <laughs> because we all wear white. And then as a, we really don't know about the Chinese culture. We have so much to learn. So it's these three, three examples, I tend to think that they, um, they have to rethink their own position in Chinese society, their identity. How do they relate to the Chinese people? And also, they now have to rethink that, do I really know so much? When I was in school, I said, hey, I am very bright, I know so much. But when you go to China, everyone te uh, talking in Chinese, they have a, a, lo a long culture, do we really understand them? Okay, are we really so bright as we thought when, I, when we were at home? So um, I, I tend to think that they were very humble in a Chinese society. Humility uh, was the word to describe them, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, that is a, a very marvelous description of these these uh, sisters, and it's it's also kind of a, a a a benefit of researching the modern era that you can sometimes meet the people about whom you write. Mm -hmm. Unlike me, you know, I I write about the Qing Dynasty. So, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, there there's there's um, the next question. Then I I don't know. You can choose any place, but the next question is if you had a meaningful moment uh, in a certain place while you were researching, and I know you mentioned your work at Mary Knoll. Um, the question is, is, was there an experience in China that you've had or, or elsewhere that while conducting your research that was particularly meaningful? You may have already answered this, but is there something that you would like to say about that? Um, mm, now, uh, conducting my research it would be when I was a patient student and I was doing my research and maybe one occasion that I was well I was to uh, interview um, the the head of the Beijing United Front Department and then I, I thought wow the head of the Beijing Depa uh, United Front Department difficult and but, but it turned out that he was very friendly why because uh, I was introduced to him by his teacher by his teacher, who was a professor in uh, Beida in political science. And um, he was uh, very friendly, trying to get materials for me. Um, 
and he summoned all his subordinates in front of him and asked and said, oh, this is uh, my, my teacher's friend. You have to answer all, all her questions. There was one thing I was, oh. well, it, 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 it made me think that, well, uh, I, I tend to get an impression, and later on in, in Beijing also, that um, the Chinese, the, uh, actually the communist, um, of uh, the more seniority of, um, of older age, they tend to also the same, very humble, because they uh, experienced the uh, Cultural Revolution and they were, uh, well, they, they did not receive any good treatment. So I, I think these people were very humble because they had been uh, in bad circumstances. If you, are, if you are very fortunate and you are rich and you got all you need, you won't be humble, I think. Uh, but these people, they have suffered a lot. If, even they are intellectuals, they have suffered a lot. So uh, later on, when you, I got more to know about uh, the Chinese in, uh, in Beijing, then I, I tend to feel that, well, if I want to have a second home, it would be in Beijing. But that was in 1990, 1992 or something like that. Is it in 1992? No, no, no. Uh, maybe more earlier than 1992, okay? So, and they, trust me, they have no, uh, no, 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 nothing to suspect of me. Maybe um, I really look young. So they thought, oh, she's harmless, <laughs> something like that. So, um, and also maybe the, the idea that I was introduced by the teacher. So the teacher thing is very important. Mm -hmm. It's very important in the Merino sisters and also in the uh, Chinese, commun Chinese communist. And then, um, so uh, later on, after I returned to Hong Kong with uh, my research in the Merino archives, I wrote an article, and um, and then and that article later was published in our historian. And um, they, the the, the 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 sisters like it very much. And um, mm, for me, it's, it's like, um, well, it, it's like a good, good chance to know these people who really know so much, but being very humble. Mm -hmm. And then I, I sent uh, the off-print of that article to John Carroll, who is now in uh, Hong Kong U teaching Hong Kong history. And then he said, wow, you were publishing about the communists, and now you published about the... Uh, the Catholic sisters, maybe they were missionaries of different kinds. I said, oh yeah, they are missionaries of different kinds. Because I think deep inside me, I, when I was working on Sino-American relations for my master's degree, I, I told people that I want to um, do a mission. That, what, what, what kind of mission? To let the Chinese and the Americans know each other better. Okay, that was my idea. Because at that time, when I was uh, graduating uh, for my undergraduate degree, that was the uh, June 4th incident. I, the year I graduated from my um, undergrad degree was the June 4th incident. And the, um, and the Americans, of course, scolded the Chinese. And the Chinese, of course, scolded the Americans. <laughs> so I thought, maybe we should understand each other better. And... Um, I think it's deep inside the sense of mission in myself, which helped me to do some history. Okay, and um, when when it comes to if I need to do history because of my payroll or because I need to uh, extend my contract, I tend to feel very difficult. Uh, it's like uh, I have to do this because I I have to get my job. So, um, but if I have to do this because there's something meaningful then uh, it's a little bit different, yeah. You know, it's interesting that you were there so close to the June 4th incident in 1989. Um, and it's interesting that, they, that the party member was so open because often people preserve, presume that uh, after 1989, they would not help you. But I think you had a good connection with your teacher. Yeah. Well, yeah, so um, Professor Chu, then the, the next to last question is one that um, we've asked everyone, and that is, do you have any memories of another scholar 
another researcher in the field of China Christianity studies. Um, some positive memories or something that you'd like to share something you think because we've been asking you about you and now we'd like to give you a chance to talk about someone else uh, another scholar do you have any recollections that you think should be remembered in our field mm. well um uh let me think there are so many of them so it's hard to um uh okay 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 Okay. Um, there was a, uh, uh, it's, it's not a scholar, it's a journalist. It's uh, Penny Lernus, who wrote, uh, I don't know whether I pronounced her, her name correctly because, because it's, uh, it's, is it French or is it what? Uh, she wrote the first book on the Mary North Sisters. Sorry, I, I have to find the book for you, but I can maybe at home. Um, and she was actually at, at that time asked by the Mary North Sisters to write the book for them. And uh, that book was called uh, Hearts on Fire. Fire. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I never met her because uh, she died early. She died before publishing the book or finishing the book. So the book was later finished by the Mary North sisters. But, um, but the book was very well written. And um, it's like because uh, she was a woman and she, um, she's a, she, she said she was a middle class woman. And then she visited every field of the Mary North sisters in the world because of world mission. So she visited the very poor uh, places and she said, what am I doing here? I'm a middle-class American and now I have to take a shower outside, no, outside, outside somewhere and then no, no, no warm water, etc. And with all the mosquitoes, things. And how could the sisters uh, bear all that? Because they were, I mean, actually the Merino sisters, they are also middle-class uh, women in America. So she had a very strong love for the Mary North sisters. But unfortunately, she died early. And, um, and all the Mary North sisters remember her, remember her. When they talk about the history, they, they, they don't remember me, <laughs> but they remember her. And then, uh, and, and why I mention her? Because she requested, she requested herself to be buried in the, uh, in the grave in the, uh, uh, of the Mary North sisters. So she was uh, buried uh, in the same place of the Mary North sisters. Mm -hmm. So um, that explains she really loved the sisters very much that she wanted, to, after she died, to be with them. Yeah, yeah. That's a very, that's a great story. Was this, is this graveyard in America then, at, in New York? New York? New York in the Mary North sisters yeah. play. If you have a chance, you, uh, I, I, you, well, um, to go to New York, then maybe it's yeah, good to visit. I, the I've always wanted to visit the Mary Knoll archive, and I still haven't. I've been many, many places, but not there yet. And and uh, I hear so many good things. You know, John Paul Weist, of course, worked there at Mary Knoll, and uh, he has talked about how wonderful that archive is. Well, Professor Chu, we have one more question, and we have about five more minutes, uh, maybe just a slightly bit, a bit more. Um, the next question, some people say, is a, is a kind of boring question, but it's an important one, and that is, uh, you have published so much in this field. Um, what are your hopes for the future? So many younger scholars who want to study Christianity in China have asked me, what do the senior scholars hope for the future of the field? Mm. Now, because we have the coronavirus and also with your president. So I do hope that uh, we can uh, understand each other better, understand each other better. So for the future, well, I, at first I thought we already understand understood each other quite quite much but with your president I, now I tend to get a negative <laughs> idea that maybe we, do, we, we we don't understand each other that well 
soap of Christianity because I'm a, a foreign religion, and then and and for non-Westerners, Chinese, we 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 stick to the religion and we are faithful to the religion. Was there something really magical in it that make us really stick to this religion? And um and actually for for many different things like Buddhism and and Catholicism and there are many practices uh, which is similar, which are similar. And and therefore I would want to uh, continue my research in the Catholic Church, but to look into the more progressive side of the Catholic Church. Because everyone who who try to understand the Catholic Church will say it's very conservative and uh, uh, they would not trust you. And actually, when the two sisters, they came to hear my presentation, another scholar later told me, oh, they are spying on you <laughs> to see what you are going to say about them. So I, I think we should understand each other better because of our same religion. I, I, I still think ignorance and uh, distrust is still so much among us that we were not able to un understand each other, no matter how much work we had done before mm. in our area. And also, uh, one one uh, thing is I, I do want to do more research on Chinese women in the Catholic Church, but uh, it seemed very difficult, uh, not to say impossible, because these women, they, they, did not, they did not leave behind any writings. So I, I tend to believe that it's, it's not possible to do this because um, these women, maybe they're educated by the missionaries. They studied in the university, in the college, in, 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 in the university, but they did not leave behind any materials. So we were not able to study about them. So we do, we, we do not understand the Chinese converts, the Chinese women. Because because they they did not write anything, so so this is a big uh, a black hole to fill uh, for other people who are smarter than me to fill maybe yeah or maybe some people in the mainland if they have more sources they have more connections to fill in this black hole yeah this is the, you you have touched upon something that many scholars um, have also. Uh, noted, and that is a need to write not only about more of, if you're writing about uh, Catholicism in China, to write more about Chinese Catholics, but about Chinese women Catholics. Um, and the sources, it's, a, it's rough, How, the, finding the sources. I find that, and maybe you uh, agree with this, there are a lot of sources about them, but very few sources that they wrote themselves. That's true, that's true about them because the missionaries, they wrote about them. Uh, or maybe the government uh, 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 wrote about them because they asked for certain things, mm -hmm. but, uh, but nothing, nothing from them. It is, which, it is, which, uh, maybe only a few, uh, a few items. So that's really depressing, I would it's say. A pity. It's a pity, right? Well, let me ask you then one final, final question that's not on the the list, and that is, Professor Chu, what's next for you? What is your next research project? Oh, my next research project, because um, I, uh, those precious blood sisters like what I write, okay? They don't, they don't necessarily like me because they, <laughs> they like what I write. So they translated the book into Chinese. They used three years and translated the book into Chinese. And um, it, with, the Precious Blood Sisters, they have very um, high educated um, uh, individuals. Uh, most of them were theologians, but they don't have historians. But they do have uh, archives, which is uh, quite okay. And there was an 80 year old nun there responsible for the archives. And they could, uh, and, well, and she could ask you any question, answer you any question. So that is good. So I'm, I'm now working in the archives and uh, writing um, the remaining part of their history, the remaining part of history. So I was there just this Monday 
and uh, working. And uh, of course, I asked her because she, she knew everything. And, uh, and then she uh, kind of scolded me. Why was your first book only up to the 1970s? I thought you were going to write the whole thing. I said, uh, well, uh, then we can have a second book. <laughs> so um, I'm trying to have a second book on them. And uh, also because of the Zoom Symposium, I'm trying to have the, the editor folium for the Zoom Symposium. Actually, I'm interested in working on sino vatican relations in the 1980s um, to see what was, the, what was the situation, what were the problems, and uh, why were they able to continue. Um, um, so I, I would like to work on that period. And also the handbook, uh, the handbook on the, uh, on the Catholic Church in China. So we have been um, doing quite good in soliciting um, uh, writers and also uh, Tony, you, uh, you will be right, one of the writers. So thank you very much. And, um, and Joseph Ho was very helpful in, sol in helping me to um, advertise for the handbook. So I think um, the China handbook almost, almost except two chapters, almost taken by scholars. And it was good because um, I suddenly re realized there are so many young scholars working on Catholic Church, I, whom I don't know, <laughs> whom I didn't know before. And of course, I, I know you very well because of your many books. But the others, well, they, they also have one or two books, but they're assistant associate professors. But then they're young, much younger than me. So it's good to have some new faces or new voices um, to continue the work. So I'm quite happy to know to know these people and uh, to know actually they did quite good. Why didn't I I know them before but it's a good good chance to know these people and maybe next time if we can really travel then we can have a larger conference. I think that's a marvelous idea. Professor Chu we are just now out of time. I hope many of us are looking forward to having uh, your future books on our shelves. Many are very excited about the handbook, by the way. I think you plan on, is it how many volumes? Three volumes. Uh, the handbook, um, the first volume on China, the second on Korea, the mm. third on Japan. On but Japan. it will be finished. We plan to finish uh, within four years. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is excellent. Uh, Professor Chu, uh, we are grateful again that you have agreed to be interviewed. What marvelous answers. It was great hearing your stories about these Mary Knoll sisters. Uh, and it sounds like you, if you were to interview some Chinese Mary Knolls, there must be some. It's maybe the, the Sisters of the Precious Blood. Certainly you can get some Chinese women's voices. Yes, that's true. That's true. Yeah, I do interview them. Um, I should interview more, yes. But thank you so much. What a joy it was to speak with you. Thank you very much for this opportunity. I enjoy very much and because not many people would, well, would like to hear what I have just said. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh -huh.